Hello and welcome to the Walk in Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about how heaven is cheering you on. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. The Walk in Love podcast is a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about rhythms, faith, emotions, parenting, etc. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we try to find language to live a full life. And if you like your listening to line up with your living, you're in the right place. You slid it down. That was sure for wins, right? Or no? Sarah. Sarah. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. It's been a little bit of a break for us. Um, and by break, I mean, I traveled with kids for 14 days, one of which was <laughs> Daisy, who literally doesn't stop talking from the moment she's awake <laughs> until the moment she's asleep. Mm-hmm. I love her. With all my heart and soul. But around day 12, I told the big girls they couldn't ask me any more questions. <laughs> um, but today we're going to talk about um, Moms on Maui. Mm-hmm. Actually, we're only going to talk about Moms on Maui. I'm not going to get into my trip at all. Okay. Or should I just tell the, I don't one, know. Should I tell the one story? I don't know. I mean, I, say, I was about to say, I don't know if I have that much to say, which makes it sound like I don't have anything to say, which is not true. Yeah. But I also am like, I'm not prepared to talk for 38 minutes on my own. Okay. So have at it. So I'll tell one story and then we'll get into Mount Rushmore. Okay. Um, which, Brooke, you're on the board. It's two to one. Okay. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Um, Doing what I can. So we traveled to Kansas City and then to San Diego. We had a blast. It was mm-hmm. super fun. Uh, we homeschooled the whole time. Mm-hmm. Very proud of myself for that. But they had a certain amount of lessons that they needed to complete. And I told them if we get all these complete, uh, we'll go to Legoland in Southern California. Mm-hmm. Cause I really wanted to go to Disneyland. I'm like, we're not going to Disneyland without mom. Plus yeah. it's like $500 and Legoland is way cheaper. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, so that's my deal. Yeah. Day two, I was like, this is going to happen. You're feeling like, I'm it's feeling not like this work. is not going to happen. Sunny is like just hard to teach on day two, like mm-hmm. to the point where I'm like, I lost my cool, probably lost my cool twice on the whole trip. And mm-hmm. that was one of them. Yeah. Text broke was like, I feel super bad. I lost it. Like, and again, I just was like, get it together. You know, mm-hmm. not, nothing extreme, but extreme <laughs> for me in the way yeah. that I parent. Yeah. And, uh, but we rallied and we got them all done. And I actually think like we turned a corner mm-hmm. with Sunny. She's, you know, Aww. she's still a f- six year old. Yeah. She's six. Yeah. I think she talks about her seventh birthday so often. She I'm does. Like, yep. Is that happening yet? No. Yeah. In her head, it has. <laughs> um, but we turned a corner, and uh, so that was good. So, got through all the lessons. Mm-hmm. We're going to Legoland. We're excited about it. I'm with my sister and her family. They've never been either. Um, this might have been when the like the, the the question ban was in place, but it did not last during the trip to Legoland. <laughs> it's like 30 minutes from my sister's house. Are we there yet? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been there? What kind of rides do they have? And then like kids that haven't been there are answering the questions. Right. And then kids that haven't been, no one's been there. No one's been there. But kids that haven't been there are answering the questions, just guessing. And then kids that also haven't been there are getting mad at their answers because they don't want it to be spoiled. Mm. And I'm trying to explain that no one has ever been there while listening to the Wish soundtrack for the 7,000th time. (laughs) So I was cracking. Anyways, we get to Legoland. It's super fun. It's like... It's like a cross. It's like between, so uh, Pennsylvania listeners are going to understand this. Mm -hmm. It's like somewhere along the line between Dutch Wonderland and Hershey Park. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's between those two. Yeah. It's. And Lego themed. And Lego themed. Like it's nothing to, it's not like I I, I won't end this this story by saying you got to go to Legoland. Right. If you have kids that are 48 inches tall, (laughs) it's the best place on earth. They can ride every ride by themselves. (laughs) Great place to be. So Sunny is like a little bit bolder than June. Um, when it, well, no, yes, yes and no, no, but, but on that day, on that I, day, she, she was, was like, I'm in, I'm going to ride every ride. And I think it was cause like Micah, her cousin is like similar age and size. And so yeah. she was going on the ride. So Sunny was like, Oh, that's just what we do. Yeah. So at first they go on this like up and down ride that like makes you like feel like you're going yeah. over a hill real quick. Right. And she did great. I was like kind of nervous for her. But she loved it, came out smiling. She has to go on it again. We're like, mm-hmm. no, we're going to move on. Then we get to a roller coaster, the Dino Soar coaster. And we're getting ready to go on it. It's me and my sister. 
June didn't want to go on it. So it's me and my sister, uh, Max, who's about June's age, Micah, who's a little older than Sonny, Sonny, Riley, and Luca. Mm -hmm. And so Riley and Luca aren't 48 inches tall. Right. So they need to ride with an adult. Yeah. So I'm like, Sam's like, I'll sit with Luca. Uh, and, and I was like, I'll ride with Riley. Sonny, mm -hmm. will you ride with Micah? Right. Cause they can ride on their own. They together. can ride on their own. So, so that, and then Max was going to ride on his own. He didn't want to ride on his own. Sam offered him five bucks <laughs> and he was like, that sounds great. And so <laughs> it's Sam and Luca uh, in the front, mm -hmm. then me and Riley, then <laughs> Micah and Sonny mm -hmm. and then Max. Okay. So. The, the ride starts and it goes up a little bit. Mm. Is but, it like, is it literally like doing the, like you, you start going and then you, you know, you, you feel it when you like connect to no. the chain and it's like, tick, 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 no, tick. not it's even like, you it's, no. it's not, it's like you almost start, like the line goes up steps. So you like kind of start elevated okay, and it like goes up a little bit. And then and there's like one big turn and that's turn, the big and then drop. It's like the turn and it comes down. Um, but the whole time we're in line, so he's like, are there any loops? And I'm like, we can see the whole roller Aww. coaster from here. Like no, upside down. Yeah, no, there's no loops. Okay, yeah. I'll be fine. So start going up the, the turn. She's never done anything no. even remotely. So like the turn, this. we go, we go up and then we come down this big turn. Yeah. It definitely like made, like it made Luca and Riley who are the littlest like slide into the corner and turn into like these little lemur monkeys, like gripping on. Yeah, for sure. So that happens right away. Sam starts cackling because her two daughters are like gripping yeah, on little gargoyles in the corner. Yeah. And so I turn to look at Sonny and there is just like fear and tears. And like, this is, we've made a bad decision. She's bawling. Yeah. yeah. She's bawling and yeah. screaming. Aww. And so I'm like trying to hold on to Riley. So she doesn't slide, like get crushed yeah. you know, by the centrifugal force. <laughs> and I'm turning back to Sunny and I'm saying, Sunny, it's going to be okay. Like, it's a short ride. You're going to be fine. You're mm -hmm. going to be fine. Like just, you know, I'm trying to coach her through it. I'm not yeah. sitting next to her. Yeah. You know, Riley's having the time of her life. Yeah. She said, I think a thousand times this is the best day of my life. Yeah. So like, she's loving it. Yeah. And Sam is cackling because Luca's like, and she's got this great video of her just like hanging on screaming. Mm -hmm. And so you go, you like kind of do this like spiral loop down and then you go over a bump and then you like are back to the start. Very short ride. But what we didn't know is that as you come back to the start, <laughs> the workers go, Conductor person. how about one more time? And that's just part of the ride. Right. And so we start going up again. They send you again because yes. it's so short. And so I am like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like we're like Legoland is ruined. Yeah. We're never coming back. Here. Yeah. And so I turned to like coach her and encourage her again. And I turned back and she is screaming with delight. Yeah. Happy as can be having the time of her life. And I don't know what happened. I don't know when we passed through the force field, but it did happen. And so like, I didn't, I called Brooke maybe twice on the whole trip in 14 days. Yeah. And the second time, the, 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 the second time I called her was right after I got through. Like, yeah. I have you to tell were you, laughing so I was like, hard. I because can really like, understand you. I got you. to call her because Sunny was like, I want to do it again. So they all got in line again. And this time Kyle went mm -hmm. and I was with Daisy. And so like, yeah. And so I called Brooke and I said, Sunny just had, Sunny was just an emotional roller coaster on an actual <laughs> roller coaster. And uh, I'll never forget it. So that's like one of my favorite oh, my moments word. of the trip. That's so good. So we took a picture of her holding on, holding the one in front of the coaster because mm -hmm. it was her first roller coaster. So I'm proud of her. Yeah. I honestly, if you had said, "Do you think Sunny will go on any of the rides at Legoland?" I would have been like, "No," yeah. and not out of like I don't believe in her, right. but just like legit, no, I don't think she would go. Based on, she kind of like makes up her mind about something. And yeah, she's so pretty you, hard to convince you cannot into change something. It. And yeah. so it's like, if she's already decided I'm not here for this. Yeah. She went on a bunch of them and, and loved it. And then we went uh, back to the kitty cat ride. Cause she asked for that. Like that was the one that went up and down. Oh yeah. And there was barely anyone there. That was like the awesome thing about Legoland. Was that normal or like, was that just the day? I don't know. Yeah. It's like super short lines and like it's open from 10 to five. So you're not doing that. Like, marathon day that Disneyland yes, is. We're going to be like, there when the gates open and we're going to max it out till yeah. nightfall. Um, but because there was no one in line, they just like kept going on that up and down ride probably like five times in a row. <laughs> I just <laughs> sat and watched them. So that's so cool. fun. It's fun. Okay, Brooke, you have the Mount Rushmore, Rushmore, mm. Rushmore of 
Card games. Card games. So I recently taught June how to play, recently as in yesterday, taught June how to play double solitaire because I got a new set of cards. And wow. I, I know, wow. What story. a journey you've been on. What a journey I've been on. <laughs> I actually bought a different, let me back you up even further. Okay. I actually bought a different set card of cards. Talk. Card talk. I bought two decks of cards from Target. They're like this trendy new brand that I had never heard of. And they had like normal basic cards were sold out. And so when we were there for Moms on Maui with, one of the groups, we were looking at them and I was like, oh, these are really cool. So they have like all the Marvel, like every Mar almost every Marvel character has a deck. There was a Harry Potter deck. There was a Lord of the Rings deck. And so it's like all the you art. You didn't get the Lord of the Rings deck? I didn't know. <sighs> For gonna, real? Yeah. You, you would have picked that, like honestly, yeah. over a Marvel one. I was worried the Marvel one, I don't know what the art looks like without right. opening them. I was a little worried that it was going to be like too much. <laughs> Local woman arrested at Target. Yeah. Slicing open all the packs with her fingernails. Um, just kidding. My fingernails aren't that just sharp. Just the one really long one. Yeah. Ew. Ah. Which one is it? The pinky or the pointer? Uh, all weird. Ring finger. Ah. Thumb. No. <laughs> Which right would across. be the weirdest? The thumb would be the weirdest. At that, but your aren't your thumb and your pointer finger more common for guitar? Do you ever see like people like people okay. like because they're not going to use right. a pick? So is the pinky the weirdest? I think so. The pinky's the drug one. Like, oh, yikes, T. That got dark. Well, it's like you scoop up the cocaine and sniff it in your nose. Oh, my gosh. With your pinky finger? I think people do that. I've seen it on movies. Mm. Seen it in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> not Lord of the Rings. No, not Lord of the Rings. Anyway, bought those cards. Ended up not opening those cards. I'm going to return those cards. Garbage cards. I got other cards at TJ Maxx. Way cheaper. Actually, really cute. Not the point of the story. Point is, I taught June how to play double solitaire because we have two decks of cards now where the pictures on the back don't match. Wow. Which is what you need. Which got me thinking about card games okay. because we were talking about card games a lot during week two of Moms on Maui. We were trying to track down Dutch Blitz. Couldn't find anybody on island with it. Well, I got to play nerds. Same type of thing. Yes, but I don't have nine decks of cards, which was starting the whole like, shoot. Well, Should have gotten Lord of the Rings, Captain America. They're $12 a pack, babe. All right, yeah. It is deductible. But Maybe we'll use a digit account to save up. There you go. For next <laughs> round, I'm going to have enough cards. Anyway, we just were into all the games and card games. And so I think we're going to do Mount Rushmore, Rushmore, Mount Rushmore of card games. Okay. Now, Who's going first? Okay. Uh, it's my pick first. I have some, I have some qualifying questions. Okay. okay. Are these games played with a traditional set of cards? They can be. But, it can but not be, exclusive. It can be as long as it's a game. card game. Any card game. That's cards only. Correct. Okay. Not like uh, Candyland, which has cards. Right. But you, that wouldn't be on my list. Not a card Garbage game. game. I mean, Candyland's pretty great for a kids <laughs> game. But. Um, okay. I'm the first pick. Oh, boy. Okay. <sighs> oh, man. Again, it's tough. this is like people voting. People I'm like suddenly vote. now. Okay. It's not actually my personal Mount Rushmore. Right. I am going to go with Apples to Apples. That's only cards? Yep. I'm on the board. Solid pick. I need to Google that real quick. I that just is played. not a cards game. Yes, it is. You have the green cards and the white. The, I just played at Sam's house. We played Apples to Apples Jr. I guess just because it comes in a box. You didn't say feels. anything about the No, I know, case. I know, I know. Is Apples to Apples a board game? Apples, sorry. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> apples to apples is a multiplayer card game. Oh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> that was so real and authentic. Brooke almost never swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Apples to apples is a card game. And a solid start. <laughs> well, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> I got to think about cards in boxes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay, well, a deck of cards comes in a box. Yeah, a tiny little box that comes. That's like so many cards, <laughs> but it is a card game, as I have just discovered via Google, via Google. Um, I'm gonna have to go. This is both both my personal number one game, and okay. also I just feel strong about it. Uno, solid pick. I love Uno so much. You I have do? played so much Uno in my life that it is like, it's very nostalgic for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go Uno. Okay. Uh, My Uno is Uno. Don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't stop. Okay. Uh, my second pick, this 
it, it's called Nerds. Yes, it is. It's real. It's a real game. But it's also similar to Dutch Blitz. So I'm just going to say Nerds. Yeah. But tell the voting audience no. on the Facebook. No, it is a separate game. <laughs> it's the same rules. No, it's not. It's not. It's actually not the same rules. Okay. There's something different about it because we were we were just having this conversation. <laughs> okay. Second week okay. two. Okay. Second pick is Nerds. Okay. So my second pick is Dutch Blitz. <laughs> oh, you dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. They are not the same. Thing. Oh man. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with my third pick. This is a risky one. Cause some people are like, this is the worst game ever. Some people love it, but I'm going to, ha- I'm going to make a caveat. Okay. okay? I'm going to pick war. Okay. Classic card game, but the Mesitas version. Yes. You have a way more fun version. So we play in our house that we play war, you know, normal, like big card wins, but every joker in the deck is an automatic war no matter what, mm-hmm. no matter if, no matter what card it's up against. Mm-hmm. And so it just creates more war, more fun, <laughs> more, more war, more fun, more war, more fun. <laughs> That's a direct quote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I, 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 yeah, I feel similarly in num- slot. Number three for me is it's classic. I'm going to have to go solitaire. You love it. I also love solitaire. <laughs> Is it the only game I have on my iPad? Yep. <laughs> it's great. It's a great game. I don't have to think about anybody else or anything else when I play. <laughs> and that's my sweet spot. <laughs> Give me a diet Sprite and some solitaire. <laughs> um, Brooke does not drink diet Sprite. No, I don't. <laughs> solitaire. I also enjoy double solitaire, but okay. you, have, you have to play with somebody. All for right, my, my last game, uh, Blackjack. Oh, is that poker or is that different? <laughs> it's different. It's called blackjack. How do you play blackjack? I feel like you taught me how to play that. It's like you have to try married. to get to 21. 21. You're, okay. you're going against the dealer. If you go over, you bust. Mm-hmm. It's a bit, it's a gambling game. Not that I okay, ever, see, I've that's why gambled. I feel like it. Like I mean, you would play in a casino if I ever went. And the only reason I've so ever you, gone. You it, can play in a casino though. Yeah. It's like one of the games being played. Yeah. The only reason I've ever been in a casino is to try not to poop my pants. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, wait, can I change? Oh, man. You can change it. Okay. I actually want to change my third pick. Is that possible? Sure. We're, we're just making stuff up now. Okay. No, I'm going to change my last pick. Get rid of Blackjack, Exploding Kittens. Solid game. Yeah. Very solid game. Fun game. Super fun. Crazy art. One of the most successful Kickstarters of all time. Unless that's what you were going to pick. Uh, well, it was, was on my list, but I hadn't, uh, hadn't totally. If you're going to pick there. it, then I'll go back to blackjack. Okay. Well, if you want to steal my final pick. I know <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have so many left written down that I don't know what to put in. The, and by so many, I mean one other one. <laughs> Two other ones. Lists of fun. Really? Lists of fun lists. Would you say that Spot It is a card game? Yes. I might go Spot It. Okay. That's been a fun, relevant one in our lives. Yeah. Which, if you've never played, it's at Target in a round circle dish. Din. Pin. Wow. <laughs> dish bin din. Tin. There's the word I'm looking for. I might have just had a stroke. I don't know. <laughs> It's a good one. And when you play it, it's like a, you have to match up. Like there's you all each this, flip a card Yep. and there will be something on every single pair of cards that matches. There'll and be as one you thing think about it. Same. You're like, how, how scientifically, how does scientifically, this work? How did they make this game possible? I don't understand. I, don't understand. I really don't understand. Okay. So you guys can go vote for those on the Facebook page. Vote DJ, please. Thank you. <laughs> I don't feel confident about nerds. You don't, but, but my family loves it. Yeah. And we've, <laughs> People but, last week knew what it okay. was. All right. I honestly have not played Dutch Blitz a lot. I just know that it's well. It's like real popular in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, because of yeah, the, the Dutch, Dutch, as in Dutch Wonderland. Yeah, Dutch Wonderland, which is a step below Legoland, right? Which is a step below, probably like ten steps below Hershey Park. Hershey Park is enormous is nice. and <laughs> vi- it's nice. It's, <laughs> it's a noise oh, park. Uh, my nephew. What's up, dude? 
Oh, dude. Oh, he Hello, dude. He thinks it's super funny and to thought talk it was like super that. funny, and June loved it. I was like, thanks yeah. thanks for that, Nick. Appreciate that little yeah. takeaway. Yeah, she was doing it in the back of the car today when we drove into the neighborhood. <laughs> She's like, what's up, how's this? We're back. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Wow. All right, Brooke. I don't feel confident in Spot It, but it's a, it's a great game. It's a great game, and we've been playing it. It's we've been super relevant it, for us. And it's, yes, so. it's relevant. It's cool. It's it. It's the bum. It's uh, It's not sus. Mm. No cap. Touch, nope. Touch grass. No. Touch Mm-mm. grass. That just is just weird. I I understand it's full to, full context right away, but I'm just like, there's this why <laughs> why <laughs> there's Say this guy like on Instagram who tries to <clears throat> he's a substitute teacher, and his whole shtick is he goes to classes and tries to tell them that these are the slang words other schools are using. So like, he's a substitute. Sorry. So, so yeah, he's a substitute, teacher, he's a substitute. And he makes Oh, a, so he's like, so over at this school, yeah. they're saying this. <laughs> so he's oh, like, that's so good. And so I, I'm that's now, like fetch. Yeah. Karen. Yeah. You are never going to make fetch <laughs> and so happen. Like, he's always making up for it. So, you know, you never know. It could happen. That's Anyways. Funny. All right, Brooke. We were gone for 14 days. Yes. I was here in this house. You were here in this days. house with no children mm-hmm. and a bunch of moms. Yeah. Slash ladies. Ladies. Yep. Um, and from what I could see from the outside. Yeah. It was a very impactful time yes. for both you. Yeah. And these women. Yeah. And it'll probably be something that we talk about for the next few episodes. Yeah. Um, as we sort of unpack it and talk about it and all this kind of stuff. What would you say is like... Is there anything that like from like a 10,000 foot view mm. for one week or both weeks or just for like the experience in general? Like what, it, like, yeah. is there something that you can give us or tell us sort of just like, what's the big picture of what Moms on Maui does to people or, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Is, I mean, I think that, yeah, the big picture of what I think it does to people, because I've heard this from all the groups now, like women who are single who are married, but don't have kids who have one kid who have six kids, like yeah. the spectrum of yeah. ladies ages 20, early twenties to mid forties is like, this was the reset I needed. Mm. Like that word comes up a lot. You know, people say, I mean, and they mean it like this was life changing. This was perspective changing. This was lots of things, but they all circle around that. Like this was the shift and the reset I needed to go home and X to, Mm. to go home and lean into this, to go home and be a better mom, to go home, like, you know, to enter the next phase of life or the next stage of life. Like Mm. it's this clarifying few days that are honestly so great. And I know, I know it's in my house and I know it's my event and I know I'm the one like curating everything, but like, I have done so with a lot of prayer and intention. And so to hear that it works is Mm. like such a gift. Well, I feel like Like so exciting to be like, that is exactly how I wanted you to feel. Mm. Yes. You know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, you know, like Brooke and I have this weird travel rule between the two of us where like, we don't have to FaceTime each other. We don't have to call each other. Like we've never even really talked about it, but it's just just like, it's just kind of the net, like, because whenever you start to FaceTime with kids, it like sends them into the emotional typically dino coaster of life. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it called um, Coaster Saurus? Coaster Saurus, yeah. the emotional coaster source of life. And they all of a sudden <laughs> realize, oh, I miss this other parent or I miss this yes, other person. It's, it, yeah. Especially when younger kids. Yeah. And then it, then it like comes out in all sorts of different ways. Mm-hmm. And so we've just like, not, not, on, not on purpose, but it just sort of happened that way. And like we would text every day yeah. and be like, I'm awake. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm awake. You I'm know. teaching school. Here's but a selfie. But also I can see your location. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, they're at Nick's house. Yep. Oh, they're at Brad's house. Yep. Oh, they're getting pizza. <laughs> oh. I see a Starbucks notification. <laughs> nice. They just got Starbucks. Yeah. And so, but I, but one thing like we, we, we talked briefly in between the two weeks mm-hmm. and then we talked again during the emotional roller coaster <laughs> on a roller coaster, um, which I feel like should be the title. hundred oh, percent. Um, I've already written it down okay. at the top. Title um, of this episode. Um, but I feel like what Amber said to you was a very mm. apt description of Moms in Maui from an outsider. So so Brooke asked two people to come help one per, for each week. And the yeah. first week was your friend Amber yes. from Pennsylvania. So she mm-hmm. we actually got to see her 
um, while like we were trying to rush hours. out the door. Yeah. Literally packing Daisy's clothes as we left. I almost because forgot. Because we forgot. We almost forgot. So. Um, like she was buckled into her car seat. Yeah. I went back into her room to grab one thing and thought, why is her bathing suit sitting on top <laughs> of her like dresser? <laughs> yeah. To which then I thought I laid that there hours ago to be packed. I have not packed her anything. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I definitely had to buy her two t-shirts while yeah. I was uh, there, that. but that's fine. They're cute. <laughs> um, as Amber said, like, and, and Bianca kind of like echoed it when mm. she was there for the night that like mm -hmm. she got to witness her, one of her best friends, mm -hmm. her good friends doing something, stepping into something that she's super gifted at, which Aww. is you. Yeah. And I feel like that is such an added, like something that you'll never say about it, but <laughs> that I can say about it as your husband, mm. that your friends can say about it is like, you are incredibly gifted at making people feel welcome and appreciated and loved by tactical things. Mm. You know, like you might not be the most chatty person of, of all time. Yeah. You might not want to <laughs> small talk into oblivion, mm -hmm. but like you make people, whether it's your family or strangers or people visiting our house, um, which podcast fans can do. There's a page somewhere on the internet that allows you to do that. <laughs> It's on the website, isn't it? Like the tab stay with us. No, it's got a password though. It's in the Facebook group. Is it the Facebook? It's the Facebook group and yep. the password's there. Anyways, it's like you make people feel welcomed and loved by like mm. the cooking and the hospitality and the baskets and just like the friendship that you kind of cultivate mm -hmm. in the room and the tab through the tasks and food and all this kind of stuff. And so mm. I think that is just like such a cool thing. It's such Aww. a great gift. Thank you. It, honestly, like I'll, I, I, I didn't realize until this round more so the last two weeks, how many of my gifts I have put into one week. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Oh yeah, I don't mind cooking. Like food doesn't overwhelm me. I'll yep. make food. Like I know that I can do food and that that's like a gift. And I know I have other ones, but I didn't really realize how many of them get shoved into one week's time. Right. And no wonder it's so enjoyable for me. Yeah. And no wonder I'm just like, this is great. Yeah. Like, not that it's easy as in it's not hard because there's elements of it that like we're all tired and there's all these yeah. or I'm tired and me, whoever's helping me. Like it's, it's, it's not easy as in like, Oh, it's nothing. I put no effort. Right. It's easy. But like, it's easy because I love to do the things we have right. decided to do. And that's yeah. really fun. Um, but yeah, it was just such a great time. The, and it's funny, every group asked what's, what are the other groups like? Has every group been different? And I'm like a thousand percent. Yeah like wildly different from each other, That's which is crazy. so cool yeah. that I'm not just like, Oh, that was basically like last week, except right. this one person was kind of different, like yeah. completely different vibes. Cause we've done four weeks now two last October and then two just now in April. And, and then we have two in July, right? Spots two in July. Available. Um, it's just so cool to see if fu fully, I believe God pulling together the people he did for certain weeks. Yeah. Um, well, I felt and from the, the connections outside, made from an instant were just like, yeah, so amazing. And I felt from the outside, like, again, you know, we always say this phrase, it's the worst we'll ever be at it when we do something <laughs> for the first time. So like right. the second time we felt this, this chunk of moms on Maui, we felt way more prepared for yeah. minus packing for our children. <laughs> um, but what I felt from the outside was like, I felt like, because you kind of knew what to expect, the Lord kind of like worked on you a little bit. Mm, like yes. he had something for you mm. that wasn't just like, I'm going to host and cook and do yes. this stuff. But like, yes. I felt like there were elements of it that were a little more mentally on autopilot yeah. for me. Cause I'm like, I know this works. I know we can drive that far that yeah. day and still be back for a dinner reservation. Yeah. I already know. Cause I've already done it. Yeah. And then for sure, I felt like, I forget who I was just telling this, but I feel like I was capable of being more emotionally and spiritually present mm. and not just like physically boots on ground. Yeah. Like, yeah. like get I, in the car. Yeah. We're leaving at this time yeah. make sure we have all the lunches, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so that was, that was honestly my hope going into it. But I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'll have space for that. Yeah. I'm going to try. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just so good. And I have certainly like endless stories and little like things I learned or took away or the things that were talked about a lot from the ladies, but hands down, everybody, both groups was so excited to go see the turtles. Okay. Mostly because, because of, of all the turtles yeah. stories. And, yeah. um, one gal specifically 
was like, like came, like has made changes in her life because of this turtle story. And she came here because that was her turtle act coming on two moms on Maui Whoa. was her climbing out of the water first. And so she already had a bunch of turtle gear when she came like jewel, <laughs> Ninja a necklace. Turtle, yeah. She had a Donatella no, stick. Like a necklace and a towel <laughs> yeah. and like something like she's already like, this has been super impactful in my life. Wow. This turtle story. Um, and which was so fun. So the weather week two was throwing me for a loop. We worked it all out. It was Your fun. Your text messaging reflected that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and sorry to Lindsay, who had to sleep in the same room as me as I processed what the F was going on with the weather. I'm like, it's literally the same. I had to download a weather app. Like that shows you how much the same the weather is here yeah. all the time. And I had to download an app because it wasn't the same. Anyway, I was like, we have... We cannot skip turtles right. this week. Yep. Like this is not the week we can skip turtles. So we need to rearrange what we're doing yep. to go tonight while it's sunny. And anyway, again, another one of your skills adapting. So we go, we go to the same spot. We always go to, um, honestly, the weather was beautiful. Like the sunset was amazing. It was not overly windy. The, it was interesting. Sometimes when you go to the beach, especially later in the afternoon or evening here, the water is very rough and very choppy. Yeah. Like it just, the water looks aggressive, not necessarily in like super tall waves, yeah, but just, it's just like, like there's it's more like of a current. There's unsettled, more settled. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, it, it's just really choppy. And off sometimes on those really choppy nights, the turtles won't even come out. They kind of pop <laughs> their heads around, but then they just stay in the water. Or like two or three will come out. Right. And it was, Interesting because when we got there, I was like, oh, it's not very choppy. This is great. I mean, it felt normal. However, right on the edge of the shore, the the actual like slope of the sand, like the going down into the water was a little steeper than normal. So that so I noticed right away that, that was different. And then the tide was really high. So I mean, we were sitting, and you know, T, because you've been yep. there, like we were sitting on that little edge mound yep. and like we couldn't put our feet down because the water was touching oh, us. Whoa. We had to be sitting like up back yeah. on the path. And so uh, immediately I'm like so nervous they're not going to come out because yeah. I can tell that the conditions are a little different than like right. what's normal. And right where the steepness of the sand and the waves were actually crashing, it was like really rough right there, not out in the water, but right where it was crashing on shore. So we're sitting there. Uh, this, I give a little speech about, you know, let's not talk. Don't use your flashlights. Like let's be quiet. Yeah. You know, like here's how we respect the turtles. Um, and let's just enjoy the sunset, like mostly in silence. And so we're watching and we're there probably a good 35, 40 minutes, like watching, which is crazy. All of us sitting silently on the beach is just yeah. very cool. Very cool. And you start to see their little heads start to pop out. You see one over there. You see yep. one way out there. You see one really close as they're like poking their heads up like, Ooh, anybody out yet? And then they go back under. Yeah. And then you see another one, Ooh, like, yeah. <laughs> and the, which makes everybody giggle the first few times you see it because it's just so cute. They're with their, so cute. They're, they're giant literally eyes. so cute. And their eyes are so giant yeah. on the sides of their heads. And it never fails, even if I don't make the joke, somebody else does, that it looks like they poke their heads up yell somebody's name and go back down. Yeah. Like they're looking for someone specific, right. like Tina. Yeah. And then they're like, nope. And they go back down. Tina and the so, turtle. Tina, I'd read that book. Yeah. Tina the turtle. So we're watching the turtles and eventually one does come out and I'm like, praise the Lord. Yeah. Because I'm like, I can't control Lord. If you do one thing for me, which became the joke then later, like of all the things we could pray for in life, you know, you Lord, if want... you're real and if you, ha if you can do one thing for me on this earth, make these turtles come out. Um, <laughs> obviously we were joking, but the turtle comes out. It's like a medium sized one and it comes out, but it's working hard. It is on the struggle bus to actually get up this steep slope where it's not being, cause they don't really like being touched by the water. Once they're out, yeah. they crawl out just far enough to no longer be touched but these ones had to crawl so far and they were still being touched. So multiple turtles crawled out and changed their mind and went back in yeah. and crawled out and changed their mind and went back in and crawled out. I mean, it was like, again, to the ladies there who have no context and haven't seen it a bunch of times. Yeah. I mean, that is totally possible. They, the, the turtles do do that. But I'm noticing 
like, oh gosh, like they're not staying out. And then after this one medium one comes, this really tiny one, it was small, is kind of following in the footsteps of this bigger one to the point where it's like crashing into its rear end and it's like needing to move over because they're kind of dumb. And it keeps coming and coming and coming. But anyway, as I'm sitting there, having watched this happen now, I don't know, 15 times at least, we've gone to this specific beach to watch the turtles come out at sunset. I found myself sitting there with like such hope and anticipation that they were going to come out. Mm. And so as I sat with that a little bit in this hour and 10 minutes of silence, I had this moment where the original turtle story that we've told of like, be the turtle, one of them has to go first and then mm. the rest follow. Yep. I have always pictured my, I like I'm the one in the water my life. I'm in the water. I'm in the waves. I'm looking around being like, is anybody else doing or feeling what I'm feeling? Like, and it was like, I, which I still feel all those things. Those things are still real. Yes. But I had this moment of like this, like this, I just felt like, Oh, I fully believe that when I feel that way and I'm in that water and it's choppy or it's rough or the bank is steeper than normal or whatever I'm feeling, and that like the Lord is on the shore with such oh. hope and anticipation just in general right. that I'm going to crawl out, that I'm going to try again, yeah. that I'm going to keep going. Like, and so I, I, it was like such this, such a sweet little moment of the hope and anticipation I feel over these sweet, but silly little turtles coming yeah. out of the water. Like how much more does yeah. he feel when he watches all of us swimming around in mm-hmm. chaos, trying to figure out what we're doing yeah of like, you've got it. You can do it. I'm watching you. I'm paying attention. Like I'm on the other end. I'm on the other side. And so we didn't really talk about this, like in the moment, but I was like, all right, let's go. Cause it was like real dark. And by the end there was only like four, like maybe a five, like the fifth one, like way down on the side, significantly less than normal. Yeah. And we get in the car and we drive home and I made dessert and we're all sitting around in the living room eating dessert and kind of just laughing and talking about all sorts of things. But the turtles get brought up and um, the gal who's like team turtle, she was like, do they all, I think it was her who asked, maybe it was somebody else. And that then maybe she brought it up again was like, I, I was so surprised by how much they were struggling. And then somebody else echoed in the car on the drive over, like, I just didn't, I couldn't believe how much they were struggling. It it seemed so hard for them. And I was like, yeah, that's not normal. That's not normally how it looks when they come out. So we get into this discussion about like how that, like, that's how life just feels sometimes Mm -hmm. like just so hard Yeah, and like crawling out feels impossible to the point where you actually do give up and you turn around and you go back in because you're just like, I can't do this. Right. But I, but we could tell that the same turtles kept trying again and they were trying again. It wasn't just different ones. It was the same ones because you could see them turn around and try again. And so we just got talking about how like, gosh, sometimes it really does feel that way. The struggle is so real and watching them try so hard and you know, they're out of water. And so they're not in their element. They are so heavy and their fins are so small in comparison to their body. And you could just literally see the struggle as the waves were just pulling them literally back in. And so we just got talking about like, gosh, doesn't it feel that way sometimes, but whether it feels that way or it's like the peaceful, it basically washes them up onto shore and they have no effort at all. And they fall asleep immediately. Like either way, like, the Lord is on the shore watching Mm. with hope and anticipation that we will continue to move towards him. Mm. And so in this like separate conversation, that was a big part of week one. We just, a lot of the ladies and myself included, were just really talking a lot about all the, like the what ifs of life that stop us from doing all the things. And this was like the final day and we were talking about the what ifs and there were some big revelations for some of the ladies on like, man, I live more of my life in that space than I thought I did. Mm. And that has been made very clear by coming here. I live very, very small, very worried, very tight, very like, but what if something bad happens? What if it doesn't work? What if I look dumb? What if I'm embarrassed? What if I can't climb out of the water? What if I'm not strong enough? What, what if, what if, what if? Or like, what if I need help getting out of the water? Yes. You know, like, I think a lot of times we, 
again, the analogy doesn't work perfectly, but like we can't ask for help. Yeah. Like can't ask for help to get out of the storm. Yes. And a lot of us don't. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that's like pride or maybe selfishness or like modern individualistic culture that like just basically says you have to do it on your own or else you're a failure. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just like not true. Right. And I think, I think let me, circle back to what you're saying for a second, because one of the things that we actually noticed on the night where the turtles were struggling so much and something that one of the ladies pointed out was like that specific to the turtles is that they couldn't help each other. Mm -hmm. Specifically the turtles, they couldn't turn around and pull each other up. Like they all had to make their own way. However, they were looking for that guiding one to go first. Right. And then they all follow in that area and it does help them that they're all doing it together. And so I think a great way to ask, for, sometimes asking for help can look like just asking somebody who has gone before you. Yeah, how did you do this? How did you do yeah. this? And can you walk me through it and talk me through it? Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're literally pulling you out of the ocean. Right. It just means that like- yeah you have a little bit of clarity and a little yeah, bit of vision. Like how, you know, how do you have two kids under on two? On like the path. How do that, you get kids to sleep through the night? Like yes, there, there's elements the path of that. That, yeah. that has already been set. So anyway, so much talk about the what ifs, which I kind of surprised myself the final morning when I was like, yeah, I said, but it's like that song that got me to move here. And they're all like, what song? And I was like, oh, oh gosh, boy. ladies, here we, go. here we go. You thought we cried hard all week? Psych, <laughs> strap in. So... <laughs> We, I was like, okay, so it's this song by Alyssa Smith, mm-hmm. right? Gosh, Called, I start tearing up just thinking I know, about it. Because the song still will slap you as hard today as it did four years, three years ago. It's called a song called Catch Me. And it, the whole song, literally all three verses are, or two verses in a whatever are like, you know, what if, it's, it's the what ifs. It's yeah. the like, I'm terrified. What ifs? You know, and if I fall, will you catch me? Yeah. What if I, what if I didn't hear you at all? Yeah. What if I this, what if I that, what if I that? And then the section of the bridge. And if you have listened long enough that you're like, I remember this episode, this is the episode you told us you were moving to Maui. Yeah. And this is the song that made me go, we're going. Yeah. And so there's this section where she takes all the what ifs cause she lists a bunch of them. I'll look at them right now. Cause they're in my Google search. Um, Sorry, hold, please, hold, please. Can't Google fast enough. Um, lyrics, Melissa. It's e Lissa. Yeah. I just can't type hard one or type quickly when I'm, um, here it is. Okay, so you've got all this stuff, you know. Um, what if the door is all closed and locked? What if I find out I chased a mirage, wondering if I even heard you at all? What if the cost is high to pay? I'd rather you take my cup away. I second guess if the choice I made was worth it. So she takes all these what ifs and then she flips it and she says, but what if heaven is cheering me on? David's pleading, sing your song. Mary is shouting, waste it all. He's worth it. And that line, and I shared it with them in the kitchen, crying like I am now. Um, That line, literally, but what if heaven is cheering me on? Yeah. Changed my whole life. Changed our family's whole life. I know. Like, it's not an exaggeration. It's not a like, oh, I love it so much. It changed my life. Like, literally, it changed my life. Yeah. Because I had never quite thought of that. I had been, I, I naturally lean towards, I sit in the, the, all the what ifs. What if something bad will happen? Right. What if something hard will happen? Instead of like, what if something great happens? Right. What if this is what I'm made for? What if this is what's next for us? What if heaven is yeah. cheering me on? And so we all cried over that. Had a nice long conversation about that. But then I just loved how that felt so tied into the night of the turtles where they were struggling. I mean, they were on the struggle bus hard. Like I felt bad sitting there watching them because I was like, they're trying so hard yeah. and they look exhausted. Yeah. And I, and then I had that moment of like, but Jesus is sitting on the shore with hope and anticipation, cheering, like all of heaven is on the shore, cheering me on. Mm. And so it's so sweet of you to mention what Amber said about using my gifts because I, 
I had a, a, an, a, like a, not like a sad emotional, like a really positive emotional. And I cried hard. Oh, I cried so much in the last two weeks. It's like a whole vibe. But um, I had a moment of like feeling totally confident and excited about and proud of doing something the last two weeks for moms on Maui that I was a thousand percent confident heaven was cheering me on. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> like, I wasn't like, I don't know. What if yeah. blah, 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 like, like a thousand percent yeah. stake in the ground. I've never been more confident. And it's just like, it was so sweet of the Lord to tie it all together right. for me to have this mm. moment of clarity. Yes. Instead of just like, it was great. People had fun. Turtles are great. Like, yeah. you know, all those things are true. Well, I think, but it was just like, I think it's especially wow. sweet in this season that we're in, in an era of unknownness in business and mm -hmm. life. And, you know, like, like things have not been easy. Right. You know, and yeah. we, and we have sat in the like, well, should we try this or should we try this or should we try yes. this? Like there are elements yeah. of like, it's just hard. Like, and you, you kind of, you said a lot of the ladies echoed that. And like, I have a lot of friends echoing that right now yeah. in the business world of just like, it's just hard. Yeah. Like life is just hard right now. Yeah. You know, your eggs are $20. Right. Life is hard, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe and, not your eggs. Yeah. Your raw milk is for <laughs> yeah. sure. And so it's just like for him to give you that sweet moment, a full confidence in yes. a season of just like lack of confidence. Yes. Like I, I, I shared with friends last night that like confidence for old TJ is at a pretty low, <laughs> as an all time low right now, <laughs> to which I said, great band. That's like, <laughs> and it's just like that, that to me is like so sweet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a similar, you know, not as probably profound, but a similar scenario, like with traveling, mm -hmm. like I yeah. traveled with a nine, a six and a two-year-old Yeah, from Maui, Hawaii to Kansas city, yeah. from Kansas city to San Diego. Yeah. And like, we crushed it. Yeah. You know? And so it was like this moment of confidence. This is working. This is we working. We can do this. Yeah. I can do this. We can mm. do this. Like they can do this. Yes. We collectively as a family can do stuff like this and it's beautiful yeah. and full and refreshing and all those things. And so that's just really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So my, like, it's not really a challenge. It's just like a, what if <laughs> you listening went forward living your life mm -hmm. and asking the question, like when something comes up and you have that what if question or that yeah. what if feeling or that what if like you need to make a decision and you got to decide which way to go and all that kind of stuff. Like what if heaven is cheering you on? And I just feel like there's so much, um, I mean the whole clarity. I mean, yeah. there's clarity because there's times where I'm like, Ooh, no, I don't know if they would be yeah. like, I, you know, I'm not saying it's like, they're just gung ho about everything yeah. and you do whatever you want. But like, I, I also feel like if you are praying over something and seeking counsel and doing all the things you need to do to make a decision, yes, you know, which like that, that's a given. Yeah. There is then so much freedom in yeah. believing and walking into heaven cheering you on. Yeah. I mean, when you think about like the shift in an athlete mm. when cheering starts to happen. Oh, like it's the real. shift in the it's real. Yes. atmosphere when cheering starts to happen. Like you've seen it in games or competitions, like yeah. the 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 uh momentum has shifted to go towards the other team. Right. And the fans are into it. Like, yeah. and like, I could even say like on a really low basic level of like, if you're the last person to finish the CrossFit workout for the day, mm. everyone in the room starts cheering for you. I've been the last to finish. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I go from, I'm not going to finish. I'm going to get time capped. Yeah. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Why do I make this decision to come here? Yeah. And then all of a sudden people start saying, TJ, you got it. You got it. And, and, the confidence changes, yes. the dedication changes, the focus yes. changes. The, like there is something so magical that happens in a room with cheering. Mm -hmm. And it's why we try to cheer on our kids. Like yeah. we want them to know that they can do the hard thing yeah. that they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God wants us to know that we can do the hard thing that we're trying to do. Yeah. And so he but cheers for us. He does. And even if the waves are crashing, 
And even if it's hard and even if you go, I can't, and you turn around, you, you circle right back around yeah. and you try again. Yeah. And so it was just so good. It man. was so good. And I have so many more other things yes. that I can turn into full other episodes, but Which we will. That was like the big overarching between the two weeks tie together moment of, wow, you know, yeah. Turtles yeah. in heaven all put together. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's all we have for you today. Mm-hmm. So thank you for listening and thank you for making us a part of your week. Um, we have another Moms on Maui, the only yes. other Moms on Maui happening in 2024, happening yes. in July. Uh, all the details are on our website. You know, you can just go to walkandlove.com and then yeah. there's a Moms on Maui tab yeah. and you can apply. Um, but we'd love to have you. Uh, oh, I, 100%. I would love to go. Like, I, <laughs> you wish you could come. I wish me? I could come. Cause yeah. like, I wish I could just be here and watch you mm. do what you do. And thankfully, like, enough people like you had helpers this time who were taking videos of you. So yes, like I, that was part of their help. <laughs> and it was so, so you were sweet. Also a videographer. So sweet. Every morning, June, sunny and Daisy. Yeah. Can we watch mom's stories? Oh, did they really? I didn't know y'all were watching. So every morning we got to sit wherever we were at Nick's and Kansas city and San Diego Yeah, and watch you do something that you're so good at doing. And mm. so like, and it just like, and, and to me, that was like encouraging of like, I can do this. You can do this. You can keep teaching school and doing all these things. Yeah. Um, Lego lands mm. on the end of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we have, we have two more sets of dates. That's all we're doing for 2024. Yeah. There's not going to be some hidden surprise date. Nope. This um, is it. This is it. And the, the only hidden surprise might be that I might do a dad's on Maui. Yes. So like, if you're interested in that, I'm kind of throwing out the idea of like business workshop thing. And mm-hmm. just like, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Dad's. Let's just, do a version yeah, of what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I already got my helper picked out, so it'll be super fun. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, or you think your husband's would be interested in that, like send us a DM and yeah. then that way I can get, sort of gauge the interest in that. Mm-hmm. It'd be the same price and everything like that. So yeah, we'd love to have you. Like mm-hmm. we would just real, like I, I, you know, again, like if you're feeling that, if you're feeling like I need, uh, I didn't know I need a reset. Yeah. Or like, like, I just need a hot minute or I don't know what I'm thinking or feeling. I yeah. mean, that was so much of my initial, you know, that was the, that was the podcast we had after the first round. Like yeah. it's for, I mean, it's for anybody, but it is, it really is for that mom who is like, or, or lady who's just like, I just don't, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I like. Right. I don't know what I want to wear. Yeah. I mean, that was that reel we made. Like yeah. my audio talking about yeah. that of just like that feeling is so real yeah. of just like, where is she? I know she's in there yeah. and I either am hoping to find her again or I feel like she's lost. And that sounds so like, find yourself, hippie yeah, dippy. Blah, blah, like blah. I don't mean it like that at all. Um, but just like, yeah, it's more like a step into to do that. Yeah. Who Jesus has called you to be and who 100%. he's cultivated you to be and who he, who he's cheering you on to be Yes, like, that's what we want to happen. Mm. And I feel like something that you did really well this time was like you, you balanced out really well. The, like, this is fun. This is good food, but this, and this is good community with the, like, I'm going to, I'm going to have some stuff for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read some things. I'm going to, you know, and so Mm. that was really cool to kind of see that element kind of, kind of blossom a little bit more this time. So uh, all the details on our website. Also, uh, last thing I'll say is, we just restocked a bunch of stuff. Oh, so yeah, there's we some did. stuff in the shop. Yeah. Um, let's do a code called roller coaster. Love it. So use the code roller coaster for an extra savings for the next three days. Love it. Um, all one word. The slow down tea was restocked, right? Yeah. So slow down was restocked in the, like, the mermaid color, color with the pinkish. Ink. And we added another colorway. We have a choose joy lavender tea. And then we have like a choose joy ivory, like boxy women's tea. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, consider the like wild cropped ish. F- yeah. Yeah. It's like, they call it slightly cropped. Yeah. It's definitely not cropped yeah. cropped, but it's like, if you like wearing the high waisted stuff, it's real cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then consider the wildflowers uh, on the sleeve with the little pocket print. That one's back yes. in a butter soft sweatshirt. And then two originals, a uh, vintage washed moss and a dusty rose tri blend. Yep. So, Use the code roller coaster if you want to buy tea, which would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, it, the only video I regret not having on the trip is that, is moment. that one. But like I had to like Yeah. Like you I, needed your hands. Yeah. So you would have had to have a GoPro like clip to yeah. it or something. Uh, but anyways, thank you for well. listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. Okay. okay I love, I love you. you. Bye. bye.